it, it reminds me a little bit of um, uh, the ICO mania in 2017. Well, I'm very skeptical of them. Uh, I, I, I would say I can't pretend to know exactly the mechanism by which they're being created, but I would say that NFTs uh, can be no more scarce than the, the underlying good that they're sort of representing title to. So the idea that you have NFTs of tweets seems almost absurd to me because if I do a tweet, I can just do the same tweet again. Uh, so it, it doesn't give you any sense of scarcity. Also, the fact that you can create title on multiple blockchains, uh, I don't understand why the title on one blockchain would necessarily be more valuable than another. Uh, to me, this really feels like kind of a speculative uh, frenzy where people have become pretty irrational. I remember uh, sitting in a meeting where someone was pitching the idea of uh, ICOing a company which had no product whatsoever and someone in the room asked how much they were looking to raise and they said $40 million and everyone in the room kind of nodded seriously as if that was that made sense. Uh, and to me, you know, in 2017, that was like a huge warning signal. Like this is, this is going to, this is going to end very badly. Uh, I mean, eventually ended badly. And uh, that was coming to sort of near the end of that bull market. Uh, so uh, I, I find this quite, quite worrying. Um, Ethereum seems to have this ability to create these new narratives every few years, the next hot thing, which turns out to be um, uh, really just a, a an excellent means of destroying a huge amount of capital. If you look at the amount of capital that was destroyed through ICOs, it was gigantic. Billion, billions of dollars were destroyed that way. Uh, and, and my gut feeling is this is going to be the same thing. Uh, yeah, so I, I view it similarly, uh, and I've kind of approached this from a couple angles. And so obviously collectibles themselves have value. I and mean, I, I have magic cards that are worth more than the cardboard they're printed on, right? I mean, you can, nice. there, there, there is, there is like, you know, a, a, basically it would seem silly to someone on the outside, uh, but you know, there are collectibles that have value. And now, the, but the question is with an NFT, you're betting on a couple things. One is, you know, as, as VJ pointed out, there's, it's, it's not necessarily real scarcity. Uh, and if you look at the, the traditional uh, art market, the fine art market, usually paintings become valuable after the artist dies. It's a sad case that it's often it's often the case that the artist doesn't become super rich from their work. It's usually you know later uh, because it's it's only when they passed away that their scarcity is you know basically proven. Uh, at that point, you know how many works they've done, uh, even if there's like a you know a handful of hidden works somewhere, right? It's it's you know you, you have a certain amount. You're not you're not making more. You're not making copies from the original artist, and so that's when they tend to go up in value if they're if they're you know, if they're good to begin with, and then the artist passes away. And so the problem with an NFT is that you're, you're, you're partially, you're going on the trust that the artist is not going to reissue the same artwork, uh, that they're not going to issue on another blockchain. You're also betting on the long, on the longevity of that blockchain that it's issued on, right? So you're, 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 you're buying something. It's kind of like if an artist made a really good painting, but they, but they did it on a, on a, a canvas or a type of paint that is falling apart. Uh, it's it's kind of like that with a blockchain. You have to basically hope that the underlying blockchain is is secure enough. And if it's if it's if it's one of the other blockchains out there, like you know Ethereum, you're hoping that 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 protocol will still be the leading protocol in its niche, uh, you know, a, decades from now. Uh, and so uh, there are a lot of risks there. Now there's there's interesting things. Like for example, you can have a a, a programming event where if someone then resells that that. Uh, NFT, the artist can still get a cut from that. And so the artist can benefit from the continued sale of their artwork. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm always in favor of, of ways they can find ways to, uh, you know, pay the original artists and basically have, give them different sort of means to monetize their work. Uh, but I do think that it, at, you know, this stage in the cycle, it is getting kind of into the mania phase uh, where the majority of these artworks uh, are going to end up not being worth what they, what they've been paid for in this cycle, if you look out several years from now, now there could be individual cases where, uh, you know, one of them in particular is is you know hold its value, uh, but it's I think it's a highly speculative area, and there are multiple issues like the fact that they can be reissued, uh, and that you're you're also betting on the underlying blockchain itself.